Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about an ingredient that is present in many skincare products, which I frequently point out, and that is lanolin. What is it and what should you know about it? Lanolin is an all natural ingredient derived from sheep's fleece or the sheep, sheep's wool. It's basically from their sebum or their oil that the sheep make. It is processed, refined, extracted, cleaned up, and you're left with this ingredient called lanolin. Lanolin is a, a, a desirable ingredient to include in things like moisturizers and ointments because it is very rich in cholesterol. Cholesterol is part of the skin's lipid barrier. And so using moisturizers that have cholesterol and maybe some other lipids kind of can help to restore that lipid barrier. In the winter time in particular, or in conditions of dry skin, the lipid barrier becomes compromised. And as a result, you start to lose water out of the skin very easily and that leads to dryness. And that loss of water and dryness also sets you up for things like rashes, flares of eczema, as well as skin infections. The skin barrier is just not functioning well. Therein is where moisturizers come in and can help in restoring that. It's really important, particularly in the winter time, because as the humidity in the environment drops, uh, the result is for water to leave your skin, to equilibrate. And when that happens, you, you tend to have dry skin. So using a moisturizer is what you wanna be doing, particularly in the winter time, and lanolin is an ingredient that is useful in doing some of these things. Now the principal component of lanolin is something called wool alcohol. And the problem with lanolin as an ingredient is that wool alcohols actually can be sensitizing, meaning they can kind of beckon your immune system to come in and say, hey, we don't like this, and we're going to mount a, a response against it. And that's how people can then go on to develop an allergy to lanolin. So lanolin, while a great ingredient, in moisturizers and whatnot is not without risk. And then the major risk of using a moisturizer that has lanolin or any skincare product, personal care product that has lanolin is that you can become sensitized to it and subsequently allergic to that ingredient. And therefore, when that happens, every time you use a product or come in contact with a product that has lanolin in it, you will develop a rash and be very uncomfortable and make it really challenging for you to navigate skincare products. Lanolin allergy is not the most common allergy to skincare ingredients. Uh, fragrance would be much more common, or even nickel, um, which is, you know, in jewelry and whatnot, are more common, but it does occur. People at risk for developing an allergy to lanolin are people with eczema. And the reason for this is that their skin barrier is impaired, and so they their, their skin immune system is gonna see more of the lanolin. More of it is just going to be noticeable. The other people who are at risk for this actually are people who have lower extremity swelling or ulcers on their legs. People with chronic ulcers that use um, ointments that have lanolin in them can become sensitized to it more readily. Same sort of principle, you know, they're putting it on an area of the skin that is impaired, and they're also putting it on the legs where uh, the circulation is just not as, as ideal. And so it's more of a setup for sensitization and subsequent allergy. So this is why I always point out the ingredient lanolin to you guys, because, uh, you know, it can be a mystery trying to figure out what you might be, what, what ingredient and products may be causing a problem for you. And lanolin is a culprit. Aside from the risk of allergic contact dermatitis though, there's really no other risk to using lanolin in your skincare products. It doesn't clog pores, it's not going to exacerbate acne, it's generally well tolerated in people with rosacea. And so I'm making this video and pointing this out because I always point out lanolin in case you might be allergic to it, then you know you have to avoid the product. So that being said, uh, should you go lanolin free? Well, only if you have a confirmed sensitivity to lanolin do you need to avoid it. Uh, there's no reason to just avoid it. But, you know, I make these videos so that in the case that you're developing issues with your skincare products, you might consider a lanolin as a possible offender. It's most commonly present in ointments, like Aquaphor, for example, has lanolin. Also, in a lot of uh, prescription pharmaceutical creams might have lanolin, so you have to look at the ingredient list very carefully. 
It's also in tons of lip products, lipsticks, uh, especially shiny lip gloss often will have lanolin. So it can be a source of a type of rash on the lips called chelitis. It's also in makeup, mascara, could be a source of problems for you causing an allergic eyelid dermatitis as well. If you are sensitized to it though, you really have to look very carefully at every single thing that you're using to make sure it does not contain lanolin. It's present in found makeup foundations, powders, mascaras, eyeshadows, blushes, lipsticks, um, and it's also present in a lot of baby products. Baby um, diaper creams, diaper rash creams will have lanolin, uh, as well as baby wipes. So if, you're, if you have a sensitivity to this and you're caring for your, you know, your young child, uh, their products may be causing a problem for you. Outside of skincare products though, it's present in a lot of other things. Paper, and also a lot of um, furniture or polish has lanolin in it. It's shiny, you know, it's waxy, makes a nice coating for things. And it's also in leather, uh, it's used as a coating on leather, and it's also in a lot of lubricants. So you have to read ingredients very carefully. And sometimes things that you may not even be really aware of you're coming in contact with might have some occult lanolin in there. So you can see in a situation where you are allergic to it, you really have to do diligence to avoid it. So, you know, I want to make this video for you guys to explain the ingredient because I often point it out. But when I point it out, that's not to tell you this is a bad ingredient, you have to avoid it. It's merely to point it out in the case that you do in fact have a sensitivity to lanolin, then you know not to, not to invest your time and energy into that product. That's why I always point it out. The other reason you may want to avoid it is if you follow a vegan lifestyle and you are choosing to have vegan skincare products, lanolin is obviously not going to be vegan. It is derived from sheep's fleece. So how do you know if you're sensitized to or and or allergic to a lanolin? In the case that you may have developed a rash to, to things that you're using, how do you know it's lanolin and not something else? Really the only way to know is to see a dermatologist who does what's called patch testing. And what this is, is a type of test where um, different ingredients are put onto your back. And those ingredients are some of the most common ingredients that people become sensitized and allergic to. So it's a little test and then the dermatologist, after, after you've had those patches on for a couple of days, we take them off and we look to see if you're having little rashes in the areas where the patches with the certain ingredients were. So it's a little bit of a, of a puzzle that we um, begin to attempt to solve. Lanolin is something that is tested for on that series. However, uh, it's not perfect because the lanolin that is commonly tested, the mixture of, of lanolin that is commonly put on there, will miss some cases of lanolin allergy because uh, there are, as you can imagine, lanolin, because it's natural, it's not a pure substance, and each time lanolin is is made from you know a different sheep it's going to be slightly different so some people with lanolin allergy might actually have a false negative lanolin patch test and the way to reduce the risk of this if you're really suspicious if you and your dermatologist are really suspicious is they can add additional little wells onto that test of lanolin in some different mixtures and some different forms that might capture those rarer, those rarer types of lanolin allergy. So not all negative patch tests mean you don't have a problem with it. Um, so, you know, it, you can see it's, it can be a bit of a puzzle and a bit of a, uh, you know, putting the pieces together kind of an investigation. But once you have a diagnosis of allergic contact dermatitis to lanolin, then the treatment is basically strict avoidance. And since lanolin is, is present in so many things, that can actually be very challenging. It's not impossible, but it can be challenging. And otherwise, lanolin is a great ingredient. In fact, it can be very hard to avoid lanolin, as you can imagine. It's in many things. Uh, and so unless you are sensitized and allergic to it, there's really not a, a huge compelling reason to try and avoid it. And furthermore, lanolin is a very helpful ingredient in moisturizers. It helps to seal in transepidermal water loss and improve dry skin conditions. So if you see it in 
your moisturizers or lip balms you know it's not even though I, I point it out all the time but if you see it it's not something to avoid unless you are sensitized to it now to piggyback off of that sentiment you might ask well how come you always point out fragrance and tell us we should avoid that and you're kind of saying the same thing about lanolin but you're saying there's no reason to avoid lanolin why is that and the reason is that fragrance in skincare products is much more of a common reason for people to develop allergic contact dermatitis and fragrance otherwise has no role in, in products other than to make them smell nice which isn't doing your skin anything. Lanolin on the other hand has a role. Lanolin helps seal entrance of dermal water loss, helps with skin hydration. It's a very good ingredient otherwise. And frankly, you can become sensitized to anything that you put in your skin and subsequently allergic to it. And you can't avoid everything. I choose to, to encourage you guys to avoid fragrance because it's not helping you and is a much more common reason for people to, to have problems with their skincare products. So that's kind of why I put so much emphasis on that and not some of these other ingredients that, that can cause allergic contact dermatitis. So anyways guys, that's what I can tell you about lanolin. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.